Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily uh, talk. This is episode 442. And the topic today is do you love with conditions? I'm going to break that down and give you a whole perhaps new insight on this stuff. So before I get to that, let me, let me introduce myself to you. That did come out right, yes. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day I do these talks called Messages to the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Hearts on Facebook Live. They also then go on to YouTube and also on to my podcast. And today's episode is number 442. And the topic today, as I mentioned, is do you love with conditions? So, and I did a PS in that which I took off, but it's going to basically have a second part, which is do they? And I get to that in a second too. So, thanks for joining me. Welcome. If you're in the live broadcast, you can feel free to comment put questions on the screen. If you want to share it out with your friends, you can do so as well. Um, these talks are inspirational and educational. They're not to build fans. So I don't like say wait until 10 people come joining because that's a right royal pain. So basically I'm going to get to the topic at hand so you know what's going on and hopefully this will give you some um, food for thought. So let's get jump in, shall we? Let's have some fun. So when I speak about conditions, I don't necessarily mean conditional love versus unconditional love, although that plays into it. And let me spin on that one for a second since I need to cover that one as well. I am, I'm of the belief that unconditional love is not something we do in, per, in primary romantic relationships. You may have it for society. You may have it for populations. You may have it for your spiritual connection. But the reality is that unconditional love is not really reserved for primary romantic relationship because romantic relationships are conditional. Because you wouldn't be there unless there was some attraction, chemistry, desire, and maybe polarity, alignment, other things too, that frankly are conditional. Now you could love them unconditionally at the same time, but it starts to be unconditional when you break up. But I'll get to, I may get to that one later on, we'll see what happens. So, jumping right in. Where to begin, where to jump in with this? Let me say it this way. When you love with conditions, actually, Rez, I should say it a different way. When you love from conditions, it can be really messy. So I think let's break this one down so you understand what I mean by this. The conditions I'm speaking about is the conditions under which you choose to love. Some relationships will be attracting for you, some relationships won't be. That's pure and simple. But have you ever thought to wonder why it is you're attracted to certain people but not to others? When you look at two people who look similarly attractive, and I've spoken mostly, mostly women usually, but this works for men as well. If you look at somebody who's most who's attractive and see someone else is very attractive, what is, it about, what is it about the person that draws you out of the two that gets your attention? Here's the secret. It isn't something you do by flipping a coin. In fact, for most people, for most people, you're being drawn in by these conditions. And the challenge of that is, you're not aware of the conditions that's drawing you in. So, Sandra, nice to see you. Hi, I see you my live broadcast. Um, so this is, the, this is the quandary we're facing, is that relationships aren't usually done from a place of clarity, transparency and speaking the truth. In fact, I was actually I was at an event last night um, that a matchmaking service runs that have these little lectures a friend of mine gives. And one of the questions, one of the questions and points that came up that made it was grist for the mill was this piece about um, how transparent are you on the first date? How much are you putting on a show like presentability and making it look pretty and perfect so the other person thinks you're great and don't show them the truth until later on? Well, the challenge for all of that, which sounds great in a way, it's like, yeah, it makes it look perfect on the first date because you don't have to care about the third date or the fifth date, which some of you have done before, I know. I did myself, so let's not be too, I won't be too uh, high and mighty about this one. <laughs> I've done this myself. But here's the thing. What drew you that person in the first place is 99% of the time, not those initial presentation items, actually the conditions you under which you learn to love, and I'll get to this in deeper ways, and yes Sandra, I'm sure you have a lot to say about this, let me put out my perspective and see if you agree with it, maybe you do, maybe you don't, maybe you do. See the thing about it is, the reason why I say um, do you love with conditions, or I should say do you love from conditions, 
or do you love because of conditions? I like, certainly always say this. What it really means is that we have built a framework when we're, when we're in our lives that are a protective perspective, no, it's not the right word, particular, that'll do, a particular environment under which we will love. So certain conditions are provided by the person we're attracted to, the environment we're in, how we feel, where we'll love more than we would other times. So what's happening is we are being reminded they always change because we are blind in the first few months. Oh, yeah, well, yes, Sandra. This actually is um, the chemistry piece, but I'm going to get to that in another part too, because the chemistry in a way is also triggered by this. We are, as human beings, yes, we are human beings, or spiritual beings having a human experience, if you want to play that level, which I talk about. We are, um, I'm glad you agree with me, um, we are, I forget back on track, because... <laughs> Yes, I know you get me. Thank you, sir. thank you, Sandra. Um, we um, <laughs> this is a challenge for trying to stay on topic. Get distracted by comments. Say, please comment on the broadcast, and then when I comment, I go, "Damn, lost track." So let me rewind. So we are raised uniquely differently. All the t all of us are. So the circumstances in which you were raised, the life you led, how you were loved, how you were taken care of by your parents, all this stuff is all unique. Everyone's different. Whether it was the parents that raised you, parents you raised you, grandparents, adults, adoption, whatever it was, we all have our own um, paradigms of which we are raised. And so the conditions under which we are raised are the conditions we think loving is expressed. So you may be in a relationship with somebody where it isn't until they exhibit certain behaviors and conditions that you go, this is the love I was expecting. And oftentimes, and this is the piece, oftentimes that love is painfully delivered. Most of us have not done the work to heal those past conditions, programs, beliefs, rules, <clears throat> so we can love freely. I don't mean unconditionally, but freely, different. When you can live, when you can love free of conditions, you've basically matured beyond your upbringing. And that's a place I think all of us would like to get to. In fact, I recommend highly for everybody I know to move beyond that um, bubble, I want to call it comfort zone, limited experience where your conditions override or conditions govern your loving ability. And that's a trap. And that actually is a place that is hurtful for most people. <clears throat> they, most people out there, maybe not you, but most people out there never learn the lesson to get beyond those conditions. So they always end up repeating the same cycle in relationship over and over and over again. There is a way out, and I'll get to that in a second. I want to make sure you understand this point. I was talking about this before in other ways, but the idea of, when, I talk about the, when I talk about it from the perspective of conditions, it's different from the idea of talking about it when you say about your unconditional programming, because that's not always, people don't necessarily relate to that because it's, uncondition, it's unconscious. Unconscious programming, not unconditional. Unconscious programming. Get my word straight here. So, the conditions I'm talking about are the conditions under which you were raised. So the environment, the people, the way they expressed, all these things are conditions under which you were raised. And also under the conditions under which you will learn to love. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is a challenging, maybe. It's a place that may not be the way you want it to be. Because most of us aren't raised by the perfect parents. And I talk about my parents being what I would call perfect in a certain mindset. In other ways, they were lacking too. So it wasn't perfect across the board. It just wasn't as challenging as some people's relationships with their parents were. So, for whatever it's worth. But we all have these opportunities to look at our past conditions, our upbringing, our childhood, our indoctrination of love from our parents, and then choose to do something different with that versus copy it, which is what we do. See, this is the thing. When we fall in love, we are playing default. Yeah, yes. I'm really knocking the romance out of this, aren't I? Which is the intention. Because I want to wake you up to the fact that love, love, is not ro love and romantic relationship are not 90% of the time romantically based. They're actually condition based hence the reason why you do love with conditions and it's this understanding of what those conditions are and then the rewriting rewriting rewiring and reframing of those conditions that changes your ability to love and raises the standards so you can love from a much more holistic clean neutral um, aligned place yes exactly Sandra thank you for agreeing with that <laughs> of course I'm, I, I have to be, to be clear I know that comments are showing up on the screen about 30 seconds after I said something so you may be saying yes to something I said previously but yes I hope you made this makes sense so thank you for the agreement 
I appreciate that. So, you have the choice. Gigi, what was that? Not all humans love with conditions. Not, not carrying the past to the present. I know, I know you're not generalizing. Your more evolved, more evolved patterns from the past can be rewired. Absolutely, that's what I'm talking about. Gigi, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, and I, I said at the beginning of this, by the way, you decided from the beginning, is that romantic relationships are very rarely... No, sorry, I had to reframe it. When it's about loving conditions, I don't mean conditional love versus unconditional love, because that's another conversation. So, yes, it is about self-love. And I'm going to talk about that at the end of, by the way. I have a self-love um, practice that I, I recommend, and I'll give you that at the end as well. So, so we said, Sandra, this is all about, this is all about self-love, and we have to get our issues under control. Actually, I'll reframe that. So they don't inter intertwine emotionally, come with no expectations. Here's the thing. Your issues aren't meant to be controlled. They're meant to be healed and cleaned up. So what Gigi said before that, which I need to go back to read again, um, patterns from the past can be rewired. Yes, that's the thing. So Gigi's right on point with that, and I agree with you. Whoops. I just lost the comments. Where were they? Oh, there we go. Yes. That's okay, Gigi. I appreciate the input. So, yes, you're on the same page as me. And um, we're going super hard to do that. Yes. Well, let me talk about this. <laughs> okay, you two, stop finding on the screen. So, you can use like, shh, standard, like, funny. Okay. So, let me, so let me break this down in clear words because I'm basically what you're saying, you know, I'm agreeing with, and let me frame it the way I would like to frame it. So, we have all have the same agreement here. So. <laughs> As I said, we are, we are all raised by adults. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Most of us, because I'm raised in, in orphanages or other strange environments, but generally speaking, we have parents around us when we're born and raised, adults that raise us, whether it's parents, grandparents, sib older siblings, whatever it is. And as young children, we are very impressionable. Kids are very impressionable, as you would know. And so the challenge is, is that we start to create conditions about love at a point where we're not conscious of it. So we are then carrying around, most of us, for the rest of our lives, unless we do some work about it, which I'm going to talk to you about, running those conditions on every relationship. So the way we learn to love as kids is the way we learn to do things as an adult. Sorry, the way we learn to love as kids is the way we practice and express love as an adult. Let me make this real as clear. And this is the dance and the nuance of this conversation, is that that default, which is what most people default to, if you watch around the people around you, 99% of people on the planet, are loving from those conditions they were raised with, without any understanding there's any different choice, and not even aware they're doing it. So, if you're watching this and you're going, so how do I change it? I will tell you. And rewiring is a good term for it. Our programming that we take on, using that technical, technical, technical terms, of the conditions we take on as kids, is programming. And like any programming, it can be reprogrammed, rewired, altered, re rewritten. And the thing about it is, is for many people, they're scared of that. Because the thing about those conditions is those conditions are familiar. And familiar, for a lot of people, equals safety or comfort. And so they'd rather put up with the pain and aggravation that's, that's the same as what they used to as a kid because it's comfortable, as bizarre as that sounds, and safe versus going digging deep to resolve, heal, and rewire that programming, rewrite that programming, so that it no longer impacts them and they can love from a new place that is free of those conditions. They can love from a clean place where their heart and their mind are aligned. But most people are scared of that because it's unknown. It's unfamiliar and it's not safe the way they think because it's not what they're used to having. Because, again, conditional love is the love that we were raised with and it's the love we are familiar with. But the thing is, the love we really want, for many of us, is not familiar. And this is the challenge. Is are you willing to step outside, outside that comfort zone to where you can actually learn how to rewire and change this. I've talked about this before about, in a lot of ways, and I've seen some uh, memes of this, that the comfort zone is where you live most of your life. When you step outside, you think it's the uncomfortable zone. Mm. That's where the magic happens. And so, truly, if you want to have this work happen, you want to change your life, you've got to be willing to play with magic. And that's not saying what I do with my clients. I'm not, I'm not a wizard, even though I've got an English accent. I'm not from Hogwarts. But I do have some skills in the area of spirituality and psychology that help my clients to transform that wiring in a very loving, gentle way so that that programming, that wiring, that conditional stuff can be put away and resolved and released once and for all. Because the thing about this stuff is it's not required to carry it for the rest of your life. The memories can be carried, but the programming can be let go. You can release it, rewire it, change it, completely let go of it. So that's one thing. Second thing Sandra mentioned earlier, which I will relapse to, is, is about self-love. 
And self-love is a very, very um, overlooked, underutilized, and um, what's the word I want to use? Not diminished, but but you know what I mean. <laughs> self-love is missing a lot of its value in life because for many of us, we could do a whole lot better at loving ourselves. We've been told, and I talked about this in a recent, recent broadcast, all right, they're looking for the person out there to come love us so we feel full. And it's like, why put the pressure on them? When you can love yourself easily anytime, especially when you're single, you can be whole and full so you don't need somebody else to fill you up. And secondly is, you become way more attractive to new prospects because you don't need something from them. And tell you something, when you don't need something from somebody, you're gonna be way more attractive than if you do need something from somebody. So here's the key, love yourself first, then you can love somebody else, Love yourself first, so somebody else can love you. That's how I believe it works best. And when you love yourself by having healed those past programs, you love without those conditions on board. Then you can love freely to yourself, love freely to somebody else, and receive love, fr receive love freely from somebody else. That, for me, is a win-win-win. So a couple things I want to offer you to let you know about. I said at the beginning I do a self-love practice. In fact, I have a self-love mirror meditation practice that is a download you can get from me if you want it. It's a... Um, now it's grown so much. It's a 30 page, it's amazing. It's a very fast read. It's a 30 page description, explanation, and understanding of why this works so well with the laid, up, laid out steps to take. Plus, it has an AM and a PM meditation to go with it. So, you should be guided by my voice to do the morning meditation and the evening meditation that will change your life. If you do the self love practice for 30 days, because it takes about 25, 30 days to change a habit, it will rewire your life. It's that good. Michelle, nice to see you in broadcast. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it is a great product. I think so anyway. And thanks for the people who've been buying it because they're changing it in their lives. So if you go to barryselby.com forward slash self love, you can look at it there, check it out. If it lines up for you, just jump in and get it yourself. Um, that's one thing. Secondly, if you are taking this message to your heart and you want to do some work and change your life, I do offer a complimentary clarity conversation, a discovery session, if you want to sign up for that. It's a 30 minute conversation, my gift to you and you go to barryselby.com forward slash chat. Easy. You just choose a time, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you and we'll, set up, we'll have a time to talk, and I can give you some personal guidance. So those are my two offers to let you know about, two things that will give you some benefit, and two, th two things that can change your life. Now, this is a teaching that I hope you take to heart. It's not meant to be just something you listen to and go, that was nice. I invite you to look at what I said and take to heart what I said and see if it lines up for you. Don't go back to sleep. Stay awake, stay in, stay, in, stay in the understanding and do the work to learn how to change that. Because it will benefit you. It's only about me, it's about you. That's why I do these, for you. I hope you understand. So this is number 442 of my daily talks. Yes, 442 of these. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, or even if you have, there's plenty more of these out there. 441 plus this one. If you want to see those, you can see them on Facebook, YouTube, or on my podcast. So we can find them on Facebook is facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author, which is my business page on Facebook. On YouTube, my, play, my channel is Barry Selby. It's kind of everywhere. And the playlist is Messages for the Masculine. They're all over there on YouTube. Maybe easy to find there because that's just a playlist of all the broadcasts. On Facebook, there's other stuff in there as well. And I'm building out my podcast on iTunes, which is called Messages for the Masculine. Right now, I think there's 40 out there and there's about a bunch more coming. So I'm going to be adding about 10 at a time, just having a little bit behind. Because, by the way, um, I'll be talking about this next week and I'll be promoting it then. Um, my second book, actually a collaborative book, came out this week, but it's not fully launched. We're reframing the launch. So we're going to do a proper launch next week. So the new book coming out called Love Revolution. It'll be on Am it's on Amazon now, but it's going to be more visible shortly. We're doing some re re-changing of stuff. So hold on to next week. We'll do a big promotion, big launch next week. And if you're in LA we're going to, and San Diego, we're going to do some book signings coming up in September. So stay tuned for that. Um, again, Love Revolution is the name of the book. If you go to loverevolutionbook.com, there's information there. Um, but I'll tell you about that next week. So that's been my primary focus this week to work on that. Um, and I think that's it. So you know how to find me. You know how to get some more self-love. You know how to find it, you know how to sign up for a talk. You know about my book. You know how to find the broadcasts. I think that's it. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, I, I appreciate that. The congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been brewing for a while. I mean, I'm only one of the, I'm one of the contributing authors. There's 26 of us, and there are all different stories about love and healing and transformation from different perspectives, and we're going to have a lot more from there. There's a thing also that I just launched, or I should say part of just launched, called love, loverevolutiongiveaway.com, 
which is a resource for you to go sign up for tons of free stuff. I'm on there, other people are on there too. And if you go there, you can get this stripped down version of my, my self-love practice without all the bells and whistles for free. So loverevolutiongiveaway.com is where you can get that information. And there's at least, there's gonna be a bunch of, I mean, it's gonna be open for a year and there's gonna be so much, hundreds of different free products, downloads, gifts, other things like that you can sign up for on the site. So lots of stuff is coming. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to me. If you have any questions about this broadcast, please put them in the broadcast and I'll, put them in the comments and I'll respond later on. Um, thanks for those of you who joined in the conversation. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Gigi. I appreciate you being here. And I'll be back again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. I was supposed to be 5 p.m. today, but I got a bit back a bit late, so I did it now. So if you're watching me daily, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on Facebook Live. With that, thanks for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Bye.